Whenever I post a video comparison, a camera comparison, where a Sony Xperia phone is compared to another phone, I always get this one or two people who say, why did you use the auto mode? Why didn't you use the manual mode? In manual mode, the Xperia would have beaten the other phone, hands down. If I would always use the manual mode and you're so sure that this camera in manual mode would beat every other smartphone, then why I'm doing the comparison? But that's not the point of this video. This video is about the true Xperia fans, not those fanboys who are like bragging, ah, the manual mode is the best, but never explaining how, why and when. And this is what I want to do right now. Because if you're an enthusiast in terms of cameras and you know, you have a little bit of camera knowledge, you know about aperture, shutter speed and uh, white balance, but you don't know how to operate the Camera Pro app, the manual mode on your Xperia device, the Photo Pro app actually, <laughs> This is the video for you. This is the video where you learn how, when and why the Photo Pro app with its manual mode can be superior in certain situations and why it is superior. Because it's not about the pictures you get out, it's more about the process of picture taking, of photo creation, of photo taking. And this is what we want to find out together right now in this video, so let's get started. So let's quickly start with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III that I have here. And yeah, I'm still waiting for my Pro i to arrive. What we have here are some buttons at the top. And as you can see here, there is a shutter button. And the cool thing about this one is, if you want to quickly take a shot, you don't need a manual mode. What you can do, for example, you see a nice car coming, nice old timer car coming, driving to you. You can quickly take your phone out hold this button and the photo pro app in basic mode will start up and you have then a few seconds time to align the shot to get the focus and then take it and yeah this is basically the first little tip don't always use the manual mode if you want to have a quick run and gun just press and hold the button and use the basic mode but if you want to do a little bit more you can dive into the different other modes. There's the auto mode which is basically like the basic mode but with a different user interface. So if you want to just start up with a new and learn a new user interface you can go to this mode. This mode has some other nice features like you can basically operate almost everything with one hand so I can change my focus to continuous, I can change my um, focus mode to continuous, I can change uh, from single shooting to continuous high or low shooting and so on. Basically all operations with one hand. I have to hold it with another hand here right now because I have the camera like mounted in an unusual position. I can change from uh, JPEG to RAW and JPEG which allows me to edit my photos in post way better. I can change my aspect ratio here and I can turn off eye and face auto detect for uh, continuous or for single shot AF. I can turn on the white, uh, the, 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 the flash here as well if I want to and these are the modes here. And then of course I can go also to P mode which would be the next step of learning stuff. You can see it's basically also it's program automatic. It's just one step of more options that I have like exposure compensation where I can make the picture brighter or darker. And this might be already handy if I want to have a scene where I have like clear shadows or want to have like a gloomier day than I have right now, I can make the picture a bit darker and take a shot. I have the option here for auto exposure and auto on focus lock, which is also pretty interesting. So the focus will not change to whatever I locked it on. Again, I have the drive modes. I have also focus area, white or center focus. So white where it will yes, focus on everything or center where it has only one center point. I can do then uh, focus and recompose, which is maybe something that you knew from your DSLR times. I can set my ISO if I want to. I can set my metering mode to multi center or spot metering, which will change the 
white balance. Let's go to here. And if I have like something darker, uh, let's go to let's go to spot metering. And if I have something darker, you can see the exposure gets brighter. If I have something brighter, like the sky, the exposure gets darker. And as you can see, it is locked if I half press. If I press again, you can see it is locked again. So this is the basics that you have when it comes to using your camera. And if you are happy with the program automatic mode, you can go to shutter speed priority. We can do set your shutter speed the way you like it. And so step by step from basic auto P, S and M mode, you learn step by step the basics of the manual mode or how to use the manual mode on your camera. First tip, if you don't want the Photo Pro app always to start in the basic mode, what you can do is go to your menu and then go through the settings and here you will find shoot shooting mode at launch, always use basic mode or you last used mode, which is I think very handy. So if you switched to S mode for example and you're using it in S mode and you go out of the application and you decide, okay, I want to launch it again, or you turn it off, want to launch it again, it will start up in the same mode that you had before. So, first tip, close-up shots. So let's go into our uh, Photo Pro app. I will go to shutter speed priority. I set, usually for close-up shots, I set the center focus area, not wide. And uh, sometimes spot metering makes sense, but in this case I want multi-metering. I have this little sticker here of football, and what I want to do is like focus on the front here. And you can switch between lenses here. And what I would recommend you for close-up shots is use the 24 millimeter ones, because you get a nice little background blur. And if you only want to have like part of this in focus, then you can half press the shutter button, but you can see you get this violet uh, indicator that says okay you are not you're too close you cannot focus on this so you go a little bit back and now you get a green indicator and now you can at least have the focusing right then what I always always have is like under display I have uh, the option to show me my leveling so you can see if I twist and turn the level changes and my histogram the histogram shows the color information that it sees here right now and what you want to do is like that the the highest peaks are in the middle this is usually what you want to do are very close to the middle and the the, the blacks and the whites are basically equally uh, in this in this frame basically so let's get this shot I, I'm in shutter priority mode and I set my shutter to very high so I don't get any blur and I have to go a bit back now I have the shot and this is the shot that I will get and what you see is that the law of football is very much in focus and the rest is unsharp like I want it to have. Pro tip is if you want to have the best quality in this lighting conditions it doesn't make any change you can also go to the manual mode and always set ISO as low as possible so 64 is what I set here uh, manually shutter speed I leave to 200 set my focus point again take the shot and again I have a nice little shot maybe a little bit brighter and you will see that this shot is a little bit sharper less noisy less grainy because the ISO was lower but you get uh, this is already like not in focus so the tip for this would be if you want to have everything in focus is simply switch the lens instead of the 24 millimeter you go to the 60 millimeter a lot wider uh, what you can do now is choose the focus point here as well and you take the shot stay roughly the same uh, the same distance from it because this one has a um, smaller aperture so more things will stay in focus and as you can see here law football wonderfully sharp and hate racism uh, not not 100 sharp yet but it's a lot better and you can also change the angle a little bit or change the focus point to be in the middle and now what you will get is wonderfully sharp 
love football, hate racism here. So you have to play with it a little bit, but now you have the whole card here, the whole sticker in focus, which is pretty nice. So switching the lens, if you want something uh, close up, more in focus, switch to the 60 millimeter lens. Otherwise, if you want to have a nice background blur, go to the 24 millimeter lens. And I would recommend you to go into manual mode, set the ISO as low as possible and the shutter speed according to it. If I set the shutter speed high, you can see the picture will get darker. If I, shut it, if I set it like lower, the picture will get brighter. So this is where you, where you can also control how you want an image to look like. So I see when I change the shutter speed, my exposure on the histogram changes as well. You can see everything is going to the left, so dark. And what I want to do is like all the color information that are here, I want it to be, to have it as close in the middle as possible, which is like uh, one over 200, like I have set here. Also, if I set it higher, you can see everything is going to the right and it's getting too bright on the photo as well. So yeah, this here, it may be a little bit darker even, depending on what, what kind of feeling I want to um, yeah, show in my photo, in my image, is uh, yeah, settable here which is, I think, pretty interesting. Then, if you want to avoid blurry shots, what you have to do is, like, HDR Auto is on currently. Just turn it off. You can see it has also a little bit of uh, difference now. I turn it off. You can also change it to D-Range Optimizer, which will only take one photo. It will not do stacking. We'll try to optimize the photo as well if you need a little bit of um, dynamic range. And, yeah, take the shot. And you will see, yeah, nice and sharp with this as well. Yeah, you can change the focus area to white again if you want to use it for sports and action and uh, something that you have to track where you don't need one point. But I usually have, uh, have it to one point because I'm used to focus and recompose a lot. But you can also have this one point to just touch somewhere and it doesn't matter if you're in white mode or not. You can go and say, okay, I set my focus point. So you can also stay in white mode and see uh, what it detects. So it detects here, there, and if you move a little bit it detects something else where it wants to focus on. And yeah, you control this with uh, setting a focus point, which is basically the single photo focus point. And if you don't like the single focus point, a box will appear where you can delete the single photo focus point. So yeah, this is what you can do here in the basic uh, camera interface with the menu mode. So, next tip is a landscape, taking a landscape shot. And what I would recommend you to do is having a tripod on. So as you can see here, I have a tripod here, a little one that, that is working fine and I have a clam that can clam in the smartphone. And as you can see here, what I would also recommend is always having the shutter free and having a little bit exposed of the power button so you can turn the device on if you want to and the volume keys eventually and don't worry about the uh, google assistant button because most of the clamps have like this little u shape so they won't press anything especially if you have the official sony cases on so i turn on the device and i will go into manual mode as you can see here i will share the set a shutter speed according to what i like to have and then i would like to focus on this here and lock the focus so I click on AF on uh, so the focus is locked and will not change anymore you can also manually focus but I would like suggest the AF on button for focus locking but before you do this you check your ISO set it to the lowest possible value so 64 you get the cleanest images and then for landscape I would also maybe rather for a more dramatic effect go to the 60 millimeters but in this case I would like to go to the 24. You can also go to 70 millimeter if you want to like photograph something from far away but I would rather yeah go here right now for this otherwise I would choose the 60 millimeters. Set my ISO to the lowest. Metering mode is okay. Um, uh, focus mode single I like it like this because I can lock on it and uh, yeah what I can do then is uh, dynamic range um, I can set to auto HDR it will take multiple exposures especially if you shooting against the sun this might be very interesting because you can then get a nice HDR effect sometimes it might be helpful otherwise turn it off if you don't like it uh, auto white balance I can change to something that I want to have like cloudy uh, daylight you can see it changes the mood 
sometimes you can even change the mood of the day depending on what color what picture you want to do so if i want to change the the mood uh, i can do this i can also do a custom white balance if i want to do this setting a custom white balance sometimes might become in handy just like here indoors for example you can see the wall is white but on the screen it appears yellow so if you have this problem with white balance what you can do is set a custom white balance click on it hit apply and it allows you to take a photo of a white thing like this white wall here for example I take the photo hit apply and as you can see here it now has reconfigured itself and I can adjust it to whatever I like so if I think it's a bit too cool I can go a little bit warmer here and uh, yeah this I can dismiss and then I have my white balance set very handy for indoor shots when auto white balance is uh, misbehaving or leave it to auto which will then use something automatically so i can use daylight here for example then everything becomes a little bit more bluish and uh, vibrant so i like the daylight daylight one and uh, then i can uh, don't need a auto uh, eye focus uh, i can shoot four by three or i can shoot 16 by nine which will change the the spec ratio of the photo depending on what uh, kind of photo you want to use if you want to have like a landscape you can have more dramatic effect with 60 millimeters and 16 by 9 you get a nice little wide shot that might be very useful sometimes so but i want to stick to 24 millimeters 16 by 9 is fine for me so i can show it to you very nicely and uh, full screen here on the photo then i hit my focus point and then i hit af on and then I have to hit the button here. What I can do if I have it handheld, of course, is also lock all the controls so I don't hit accidentally any control besides the um, shutter speed control that I can change here to make it a little bit brighter, for example, if I want to. But I like to have it a little bit cooler, a little bit uh, darker, I mean. And then I hit the uh, shutter button. What I can do as well, for especially useful for landscapes, let go, let's go out of this here and uh, turn off the lock is that i change it to a self timer like three second self timer so i don't induce any shakes by pressing the shutter button you can see it's shaking a little bit so i will do it again set my autofocus point and then hit the button and it will take like three seconds now and now it's taking the shot this is how i would take a shot from a tripod and now you have a perfect shot with everything nice and sharp especially focused on here you have the best shot that you can take with this camera in this mode when it comes to landscape still shots where you have time just always take a tripod same goes for night light uh, night shots landscapes or something like this of stills uh, or even if you want to have blurry pictures in night just watch one of my blurry picture videos um, it makes sense to have a tripod always we can have long exposures even if you want to now let's say you want to shoot something that is quickly moving kids cars pets something else that you want to have quickly shots or christmas even where it's usually a bit dark and you want to get sharp shots of people what i recommend you to do is go to the s mode so shutter speed priority because what you want to do is set the shutter speed to a higher value like at least 1 over 100 or 1 over 125 fifth of a second and then the auto iso is okay for me let's turn off the self timer and then you just take shots with this uh, i have now 16 by 9 one three, four by three uh, HDR would turn off or maybe dynamic range optimizer that's everything they can take quick shots and you don't care so much about the ISO because for Christmas for sports at least if you're outside the ISO is always a bit low if it's in the dark like for Christmas for example you want to take shots of people then of course the ISO uh, is might be get a bit higher and you get a little bit of grainy images but as long as the people are sharp it doesn't really matter because you don't zoom in 100% all the time to crop the photo or something like this so this is something that you can do don't set a focus point set auto uh, focus to uh, face detection if you want to photograph pets or if you want to photograph kids or people human subjects like for Christmas for example this is the optimum uh, setting that I would choose 
and I would use the 24 mm lens. If you have a little bit more time to take a portrait shot, you can go to the 70 mm one, which is a bit slower and darker. So here maybe the shutter speed you can put to 180. So if someone is posing for you, then you can use this one here. This was quick and short what I would recommend you or how I would use the manual mode, how I'm using the manual mode actually on my Xperia phone. What do you think about those tips and tricks? Of course, there are dozens of other tips and tricks that you can use in various different fields. Like for example, one of the tricks I learned recently and I was not aware of this is if you are in your camera application and you have your photo open, you're checking your photo, you're on your 20th photo or something like this, what you can do is uh, let's go to yeah one of the photos is uh, instead of like going back all the way back where well, you can just swipe down and you're back to your camera interface which is super super simple super super good so if you have some tips and tricks share it with the community not just say the manual mode is superior to everything else you have to also give some tips for beginners for newbies to how to start with the uh, manual mode how to get the best out of the shots and the cool thing about this if you learned the manual mode a little bit if you have take a little bit of time you can see how much fun it is to take photos because you can trick uh, along with the white balance change you can trick in people believing okay it's summertime instead of winter time of, instead of a gloomy day with raising or darkening up things you can dramaticalize or dramatize the, the whole photo and change the look and feel of the photo all this power in your hand in your little smartphone it's just amazing so what you can all do with this manual mode it's not just like focus point and exposure like on all the other camera systems that you have on smartphones you can change so much more you have so much more capabilities with those smartphones and especially the Xperia with the Photo Pro app that it really makes sense to use all the potential that this smartphone camera has. So I hope this was helpful in any way or form. If you like this video, like, subscribe and until the next time, bye.